Right. Good evening. Today's thoughts are prompted by two events of the past day or so. The escalating military buildup on the Ukrainian border and my off and on hobby of haranguing Jordan Peterson on Twitter threads. He's a good looking guy, but the new update to his podcast cover art makes him look like a stoned Sam Elliott surprised you woke him up so early, but seriously. I guess that's what shape he was in after talking to Russians. The latest episode title of his podcast. It was a remarkable show. He spoke with the head of his translating team in Russia, and I think for the first time in a good while, his mind and words are back in top form. He touched on profound points and characteristically missed even profounder points that he himself dangled in mid-air, but that's why dialogue exists. I, I can't complain. He prompts me to think of things. Uh, in short, these last 150 years, the Russian people and Russian culture have defined and shaped the world around them by how individuals, nations, and arts have come up against them. Beautifully, disastrously. As Peterson himself alluded to in the episode, the motherland, like the Canaanite fields of Esau, sends destiny out to meet us near dawn, perhaps with a blessing perhaps with warning. And we carry any harms and suspicions as our own when we confront it in how we wrestle with God. That's the point. That's the end. If you want it explained, here's the rest of my statement today. When Spengler noted that the Faustian world system of the West had come to the end of development, settling into either fossilization or dust, he looked, as all of us, even the beat poets have, in one way or another been doing to where the source of new energy and understanding grew. Spengler pointed to the Russian people said that in contrast to Western culture, math and myth of infinite axial space, the nascent culture of the steppe was the plane without limits. I'm still not sure what he meant. He probably wasn't sure either, and that is part of what proves he might be onto something. Despite myself, by the way, this also shows that the otherwise destructively buffoonish French conman called postmodern philosopher Gilles Deleuze uh, may have been on to something with his a thousand plateaus, certainly with his smooth and striated idea. With Russia's looming conflict over Ukraine, we are seeing in geopolitical form the fallout of the geographic and therefore cultural progression that Spengler described. And keep in mind, the step goes all the way to Mongolia, all the way to Manchuria and the Sea of Japan. The Chinese face what the Russians do regarding this new upswell of energy, and they are part of the plane without limits in their own way, as the US and Europe could never be. At best, we ossifying Westerners could be like in Egypt, Syria, or independent but less culturally powerful, as old Parthia was to New Rome. But that is a different video. We are clearly in a time of wrenching transition in scope of religion, politics, economics, education, and health. In the podcast episode, Peterson quite accurately described religion 
as the attempt to understand the divine or the infinite's reach into the perceptibly mundane. He correctly said that due to historical circumstance, what particular form of religion has been true, has changed over time. Of course, many spiritual tenets tend to hold steady across time and space, and he aptly stated that the Christian sense of religion focuses on what is called the kenosis, the pouring of eternal spirit into the world of flesh. This is the concept embodied in Christianity's idea of the Christ, as opposed to Samuel and Eli's older idea of a Christ, an anointed godly king. Anyone who wants to know what this Christian concept is like, read the short opening verses of the Gospel according to John, regardless of your belief. Think about the meaning and repeat that for the rest of your life. In Peterson so describing the idea of divine as kenosis, as outpouring into flesh, as, for us now, force-impacting form, which has, in rather two distinct ways, Eastern and Western, governed much of the world since before Constantine, Peterson's statements begged the question, in which form are we most truly confronting the divine now? And, and he completely missed the point. He even started the train of thought by speaking of Eliade, noting that Nietzsche's death of God has really been many deaths of gods at different times across history. It is obvious that Nietzsche himself was aware of this, looking at how his Zarathustra referred to a revolution in Persian religion. He even called a book of his Götzer Demerung, Twilight of the Idols. I, I, I do wish that Jordan Peterson would not be so seemingly blind to the current fact of a roughly once in a thousand years spiritual revolution that can tear down any government moving under our own very feet right now and in his unambitious default embrace of the modes of religion and culture as we have known them, with zero eye from him to the sometimes annoying but impactful novel spiritual movements of the last 120 years, in his shockingly apparent lack of awareness that new religious understanding is required to face the cultural and geopolitical challenges of now, ISIL, Antifa, and vegans from Seattle are proof. He may be stoking more chaos than he knows. You don't build on top of a crumbling castle. And the Russians know this all too well. Born and grown as situated on the periphery of four old world systems, the Persian, Mesopotamian, the Oriental, the Magian, that's Constantinople, Istanbul with Jerusalem, and the Faustian Christian West. They are better qualified than anyone to acutely see and understand the failure of old, eventually ill-adapted systems. And therefore, it is not a coincidence that they, ahead of all people, were open to and enacted a revolutionary vomiting up of tradition, broken and not, in the revolutions of 1917. Notably, the stepbrothers of the Chinese sphere made similar revolutions and drove madly into exile or hiding the Chinese Faladin, the old wise remnants of the ancient Confucian and Taoist system. And the regimes that followed in Russia and China built new castles on scorched and flattened earth, which themselves crumbled within a human lifetime. It was almost the accelerated program of historical learning. 
to somehow retreat in a second religiousness into a world of Western culture or uncritically parrot what we must hew to uh, of our own invented idea of a Judean Christian something or other. This runs the risk of making us deaf to the fact that new ears must hear eternal lessons with different words. The sculptural work of Kazimir Malevich, it's the thumbnail of this video. The early paintings of Vasily Kandinsky, music of Stravinsky and Prokofiev, the writings of Dostoevsky, these were symptoms of the upwelling of spirit nascent in the Russian motherland. How we confront it is our own destiny, is the world's destiny, and what we bring within us to confront this destiny with blessing, with warning, shapes our lives and the world. Spengler noted that the new world system will arise when Russia, quote, discovers its true religion. And I doubt that is to be found quite exactly in old ideas of kenosis. In the States, I at least must say, each man now looks to his own affairs, yet I ask Russia, can you step up to the plate? That's a very American idiom and old-fashioned, but clear enough. Quentin Tarantino invented for Samuel L. Jackson the now famous Ezekiel 2510, but in perhaps that spirit, I'll cite a phrase as, uh, or was it 17? Doesn't matter, he made it up. 2510, 25, 2510's a restaurant. 25 said something, right? That's what he yells at the tw twice in the movie. I'll cite a phrase as Peterson recently mentioned referenced several times in scripture and applied across in that spirit. I'll mention uh, a phrase Peterson recently uh, talked about and referenced several times in, as several times in scripture and applied across at least two different ideas of the divine. Starting at Isaiah 40 verse 3. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the way for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, each mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall be level, rough places, a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Thanks be to God, amen.